A warm welcome to all the listeners. Hope you have already subscribed the channel to and you are updated with all the videos. Now today we'll have the topic class imbalance. This is one of the practical problems that we face while making different types of model. In the earlier videos we have discussed about logistic regression. Now let's say we have a data set that is having two classes A and B. As per the data that you have, A consists of 90% of the data and B class consists of 10% of the data. Now very easily your model will have an accuracy of 90% because maximum times you will detect it to be A. But I think the model is not at all good. This is because every time we are predicting A and we are not giving importance to the class B. This is an example of class imbalance. One of the real time example is the fraud data. Because when you take the full fraud data, for example if you are working for a credit card company, you will see very less number of frauds compared to the total number of actual transactions which are not fraud. Therefore, you'll have two classes, one fraud and no fraud, but fraud will be very less. Therefore, in your data, there will be imbalance of the classes. Now, today we'll have some example and see what are the techniques to solve it. Let's work with the hospital data. Let's say your client says to predict a disease based on the biological inputs from the patients. But now, we, when we check the data, we see that only 8% have screened with the disease. Now, if we write a simple code, that is definition, that is the declaring of the function, disease underscore screen, patient data, and ignore the patient data, and we can say return disease. Now, what happens? For the patients who do not have the disease, accuracy is 100%. For the patient who do not have a disease, accuracy, who do have a disease, well, accuracy will be 0%. The overall accuracy of the system is quite high. But if the patient is having a disease, we are not able to detect it at a very easy way. Therefore, we are having misleading results. This is the result of class imbalance in our data. Just for information, I would like to say we are not having the focus on the train tra test split data. Please note that we are not going to split out the separate test set, tune the parameters or implement any type of cross validation. In other words, we are not necessarily going to follow the standard practices because the tutorial is focused only on the imbalanced classes. In addition, not every technique below will work for every problem, but 9 out of 10 times at least some of the techniques will work. And while you see the actual data, you will start thinking of what are the different techniques you can implement for the same. Now let's see the data. We are importing the pandas and numpy as we have initially discussed in the older videos and the data that I am taking is some common public data set that is the archive.ics.uci.edu I am taking the data in that particular site you can see the data and if you see the columns it will be the balance variable 1, 2, 3 and 4. If you display the head of the data you can see what type of data it is. Please do as along with the video so that you can have a better understanding along with it. Now if we see the data we find that this is the output of df.head, that is the first five lines of the data is printed. It has one target variable, which is with the la label balance. It has four input variables, which we have labeled as variable 1, variable 2, variable 3 and variable 4. You can see that there is a column balance where are certain things like B and R. Now, how it is divided? The target, target variable is having three classes. R for the right heavy, heavy, that is if variable 3 into 4 is greater than variable 1 into 2. L for the left heavy, that is if variable 3 into 4 is less than variable 1 into 2. 
and b for the balanced that is when variable 3 into variable 4 is equal to variable 1 into variable 2. Now what we do? We try to divide the full into two classes. My variable is having three classes b, l and r. And what I do, I divide it into two classes. One is B and other is other than B. That is L and R will be combined to a single class. Now see, before that, if I see the different counts, we find that balanced is 49, left is 288 and R is 288. Therefore, we must work with the variable which is named as the class B. And this is the reason what I say, I'm saying is that having a class B and one other than B. I'm dividing into a two class so that it can be a problem of binary classification. Now let's see. I'm converting it to, into a problem of binary classification. Firstly what I do, if it is B, I consider it to be 1 and 0 for all the other things. Now what I get and when I found the number of counts, that is df with the column name as balance dot value underscore counts and I get as 0, 5, 76 and 1 as 49. This is a highly imbalanced data set. We cannot work with this. We will also see what type of problems that we face when we write the actual code. We are implementing the logistic regression on it. We have already discussed how it is implemented in the earlier videos. If any of you are not have not seen the videos, please pause the video here, move to the older videos, have a look at the logistic regression which is very simply explained and then move forward. From the sklearn, we are importing the logistic regression and from the metrics, we are importing the accuracy score which will actually tell what is the accuracy of my particular model. We are having the variables as y and x that is df.balance we are dropping the balance because it is, it is the target variable. We are training it. We are having the model uh, which are declaring the model with logistic regression function and we are fitting the function and then we are predicting. Now we are predicting as zero. Now let's see what is the model accuracy. We are printing the accuracy. The accuracy is 9216. That is 92.16%. But should we be happy? Because when we see how many unique zero has been predicted, the output is zero. Therefore, we are not able to predict it rightly. If it is one, then it is predicted. And if it is not one, it is not predicted. Therefore, this means that although we are having a 92% overall accuracy, but the model is not at all good. Now, let's see. Let's think about a data for medical history. For example, if you are not able to detect a person who is having disease, there is no use of the model. You are able to detect, okay, the person is not having a disease. But what if the out of 1000 people, two people who are having the disease are you are not able to detect it, the person will die. You will never know what type of disease he is suffering through. Therefore, just understand what is the importance of this particular issue and how you have to find different techniques to solve it. Let's move further. Now we'll discuss the different techniques to handle this particular issue. The first technique that we will discuss is the upsample minority class. Now let's understand what we do in this particular thing. First, we'll separate the observation from each class into different data frames. Next, we'll resample the minority class with replacement, setting the number of samples to match that of the majority class. Finally, we'll combine the upsampled minority class data frame with the original majority class data frame. I've done the exact thing which I just said to you in the form of the code. Firstly, I make the df majority, that is the balance equal to equal to 0, then df minority with balance equal to equal to 1, then upsample the minority class with the help of the function resample. For this, you need to import the resample from the sklearn.utils and then combine the majority and the mi minority one. After combining, let's see what happens. Now, when I see the value of counts, what I see? I have my balanced class 1 is 576 and 0 is also 576. So this is one of the technique how we are helping with the problem of class imbalance. 
Now I discuss just about the up sample minority class. Now I'll discuss about the down sample majority class. What do we do in this? First, we'll separate the observation from each class into different data frames. Next, we'll resample the majority class without replacement, setting the number of samples to match that of the minority class. Finally, we'll combine the downsampled majority class data frame with the original minority class data frame. The same thing that I have done in the earlier code, that is the upsample code, we'll do it again. We'll again import the resample, differentiate the DF majority, DF minority, and then downsample it with the help of the particular code and then combine the minority class with the downsample majority class. Now let's see what is my count. My count comes out to be 49 and 49. This is one of the best thing that can be done because we are having the balanced data set. Now we can move with any type of model that you want. Now, after the concept of upsample and downsample, we will move into the penalized penalizing algorithms. In the earlier sessions, we have discussed about the SVM. Therefore, SVC is one of the important things that actually helps to solve this problem. What we do? During training, we can use the argument class weight is equal to balance to penalize the mistakes on the minority class by an amount proportional to how it is underrepresented. We can we also want to include the argument probability equal to true if we want to enable the probability estimates of the SVM algorithms. What we do from the sklearn.svm, we import the SVC, then we separate the input features and the target variable. That is, we drop the actual target variable from the total data set and divide it into the input and the output features. And then I train the model with the help of the SVC. I fit the total model and then I try to predict it. Now, when I predict it, what I'm seeing? If I see np.unique predict y3, I get 0, 1, predicting how many classes are there. Therefore, two classes are there. What is the accuracy? I get 68.8% accuracy. And if I see the AU ROC curve, uh, in the earlier sections also I have discussed what is the ROC curve. And if you see it, we get 46.77. That is the ROC AUC score. So understand the importance of the score, which I have already discussed in the older videos. These are the output. The things that we have printed was the np.unique accuracy score and the R RUC score. The accuracy that is 68.8% for this particular data. Now let's move forward with the tree based algorithms. I would suggest this is one of the best techniques and it does magic. What we do, we import the random forest classifier from the ensemble package. Now we again divide it into y and x that is dropping the target variable from the actual input and having the y as df.balance and x as df.drop from with uh, we are dropping the balance column and then we train the model with the random first classifier and then we fit the model. After that we start predicting on the training set and then we see how many classes are predicted. In modern machine learning, tree ensembles, that is the random forest, gradient boosted trees, these all I have discussed in my earlier videos, almost always outperform singular decision trees. Trees ensembles have become very popular as they are having extreme well results on the real world problems. Now let's see what type of output are we getting from this particular code. We print the accuracy where the accuracy comes out to be 98.4% which is a huge achievement for any person who is making a model. Then we see the AU ROC curve and then predict the probability. The ROC score comes out to be 99.9914 which is a very good result. So up now after this video I think you are very much known what is the problem of class imbalance, how to solve it, what are the different techniques and what are the different small at least the codes that you can write to solve a particular problem of class imbalance. But before 
you know what is class imbalance you should see the data and at least see whether you have to apply a class imbalance thing or not because if your data is already balanced you did not understand these things and you do not need to have apply these techniques so understanding the data before applying any technique is very important for any data scientist so i think now you are know you know what's the problem of imbalanced class how to solve it therefore all the best for all your work all your assignments and also keep liking and subscribing the videos we need your support it needs a lot and lot of importance in lots of lots of studies to make these videos so that many people who are not able to get through the different type of theory sometimes theory becomes boring the studying the reading reading becomes quite tough whenever a person explains you it becomes easy to understand so please it takes a lot of effort to make these videos do share the videos please like the videos and subscribe it thanks a lot thanks a lot guys